Meg was working hard all morning. She decided to have a lunch break and headed to the parking lot. But when Meg approached her car, she faced an unpleasant surprise. Someone had poured blue paint all over the vehicle. Meg found three witnesses and questioned them. Lily, the company's designer, said she'd been eating her taco on the office balcony when it happened. The financial director, Chuck, had a long business call with investors. And Sheila, the cleaner, said, I've been cleaning the toilet all morning. One of the guys is a liar. Can you guess who? Lily, there's an unpacked taco on her desk. Also, her hands are stained with blue paint. Yeah, that's a pretty big clue there. Meg's best friend, Rosie, invited her to a birthday party. In the evening, Meg went to the kitchen and saw Rosie unconscious on the floor. She called the police and they arrived very quickly. There are five people in the house. Their names are Peter, Kelly, Dan, Phil, and Donna. Each one is a close friend of Rosie. Officers searched the space and found these three numbers on the floor. Rosie wrote them with her lipstick before passing out. After seeing this clue, officers arrested one of the guests. Can you guess who? They arrested Dan. The numbers 12, 4, and 11 correspond to the names of the months December, April, and November. Meg went to the office kitchen to get some coffee. She wanted to add milk to her drink, so she opened the fridge to find it. Meg discovered four different milk packages on the shelf, but only one of them is safe to use. Can you guess which one? The first milk is very swollen, which means it has turned sour. A note on the second package says, stay away. And the fourth milk is ancient. It expired in 1995. So Meg should choose the third milk. And maybe someone should clean out the office fridge. Nina purchased a pair of shoes and gave Tom a $100 bill. The price of these shoes is $30. But Tom didn't have enough change. So he brought the $100 bill to the neighboring shop and asked his friend Sam to change the bill. Then Tom returned to the shoe shop and gave Nina $70. Nina took the change and the shoes and left. Later that day, Sam brought the $100 banknote back to Tom. He said, this bill is fake. Give me back my money. Tom had to use his own money to return his debt to Sam. So how much money did Tom lose? First of all, he lost the $30 shoes. Also, he gave Nina $70. Therefore, he still had $30 from the changed $100 bill. So when Sam asked him to return the money, Tom paid him back those $30 plus $70 from his pocket. So Tom had lost a total of $100. See Tom cry. Billy works as a night watchman at a large bank. One night, he heard strange noises from the bank vault and went to check it out. Unfortunately, inside the vault, he faced three criminals. All three guys were wearing masks, but Billy noticed an imposter among them right away. Can you see him too? The guy on the right doesn't have gloves. This way, he would have left his fingerprints all over the place. So he's probably an undercover cop. Bella is a famous blogger. She took this picture during a running contest and posted it in her stories. Her followers commented that one of these guys is playing unfairly. Can you guess which one? The person on the right isn't sweating at all. Something's definitely wrong here. Ryan was hanging out in a cafe with his best friend David. 
They ordered some food and drinks, and after the meal, Ryan said, Let's play a game. If you crack my riddle, I'll pay. But if you fail, you'll pay. David agreed. Here's the task. He needs to remove a couple of toothpicks to make this equation correct. Can you help David out? Here's the solution. Ms. Green is a college teacher. One of her instructors, Rosie, has been cheating on tests multiple times. One day, Ms. Green lost her patience and told Rosie, If you tell me a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell me the truth, I'll still expel you. So what do you say? What can Rosie say to prevent her withdrawal? She should say, I am telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox, because it can't be a lie and truth at the same time. Jane was performing in a singing contest in a famous concert hall. Her singing was very good, and she made the judges cry. But suddenly, all the lights went down. Someone turned off the electricity in the entire building. The contest manager questioned three suspects. Jane's rival singer, Tilda, said, I was visiting a coffee shop on the seventh floor when suddenly it became very dark. I had to use a flashlight on my phone to get out. Sarah, the cleaning lady, said, I was washing the windows far away from the electrical panels. And Frank, the guard, said, I'm so sorry, I didn't look at the security cameras because I had a personal emergency call. Who's lying? Tilda. This concert hall doesn't have a 7th floor. Peter landed in a foreign country. He opened a taxi app on his phone to get to his hotel. Unfortunately, the app didn't work. So Peter just went outside, hoping to find a driver. At the parking lot, he noticed three free cars. All three drivers were eager to give Peter a ride. Which driver should he choose? Look at the first taxi. There's a puddle of oil under this car. Probably not the safest option. As for the third car, it only has three wheels. So Peter should pick the second driver. Alex is an adventurous traveler. One day, he was walking alone in the jungle and got caught in a trap. Now he's hanging on a tree tied upside down. The rope is anchored in the ground. There's a candle burning below the rope. Very soon, the rope will burn away. Also, there's a hungry tiger under the tree waiting for Alex to fall. Now, what would you suggest to help Alex survive in this difficult situation? Alex should sing the happy birthday song. The tiger will blow the candle out to celebrate, and Alex will get a chance to escape. Now, don't complain to me, I just read these off the script. Mia came home from work late at night as usual. She lives with three roommates. When Mia entered her bedroom, she noticed someone had stained her favorite carpet. Mia got furious and questioned her roommates. Jessica said, that's not my fault, I've spent all day chilling in my boyfriend's house. Helen replied, today I entered your room only once to bring clean laundry. The carpet was okay. And Fiona said, I haven't been to your room for ages. I studied in the library all day. Can you guess who stained the carpet? Fiona. Take a look at her hands. The color of her nail polish matches the stains on the carpet perfectly. Will has just moved to San Francisco. He needed an apartment to stay in for at least a year, so he searched online. He found three options and liked them all equally. Will went to check out all three offers one by one. After that, he found out that two of the three offers were scams. What about you? Can you see anything suspicious in these advertisements?
take a look at the sign on the second house. It says that this house will be demolished in two weeks. But Will was searching for long-term rent. The third apartment is on the eighth floor. But that's impossible, because this building only has seven floors. Therefore, Will should choose the first option. Someone locked Henry in a creepy basement. He looked around and noticed three ways out. But all of them were dangerous. The first passage is freezing. Anyone who enters it will turn into ice. The second is guarded by a huge cougar that hasn't eaten for three years. And there's a massive fire behind the third door. What passage should Henry choose? The second one. The animal hasn't eaten for three years, so it's not dangerous anymore. Kind of shriveled, actually. The royal family of Ravania were going to visit the city during their world trip, and, of course, they were all bringing their precious crowns with them. They asked the mayor of the city to take special precautions. Thank you. So, he placed the crowns in a safe in a hidden room in his office, guarded by a couple of security officers. <laughs> However, the next morning, when the mayor came to check on the crowns to report to the royal family that they were safe, he started panicking. Can you guess why? It's because the crowns inside the safe are not the real ones. The first crown has a price tag on it. The second crown is broken. And one of the gemstones on the third crown is missing. Oh no! That wouldn't happen if it was the real thing. The mayor wanted to make sure that whoever had stolen the crowns was caught. He also hoped the police would find them before the media learned about what had happened. And the only person who could help him was Detective Zelda. So, he immediately called her. The detective arrived at his office and inspected the secret room. She noticed something that might help her with her investigation. Can you figure out what it is? There's a piece of paper under one of the fake crowns. The thief left a note. Detective Zelda read it. Hmm. Dear Maya, I'm very disappointed in you. This accident has proved how inept you are at providing comfort and security for your guests, as well as your citizens. I believe I can be convinced to give the crowns back if you pay me a large, and I mean it, sum of money. Mark my words and count on what I say in my letter on this matter. Here is my contact number. 19.1-1.3-19.4-1.2 and 13.3-1.2-6.3-9.1 Yours truly, The Riddling Man. What can you make of this number? Well, the mayor thought it was a phone number. He immediately took his phone and dialed the number. But, just as Detective Zelda suspected, no one answered. In one of the last sentences of his letter, the riddling man underlined mark, words, count, and letter. That must be a hint. The number before the dot indicates which word you should look for in the note. And the number after the dot tells you which letter you need in that word. For example, 19.1 means you need to find the 19th word, which is comfort. The letter you need is the first one, which is C. When you do that for every number, you'll get Cafe West. Before Detective Zelda left for the cafe, she decided to check the security camera footage recorded at night. The mayor took her to the surveillance room. There were three different monitors, each showing the room from different angles. Detective Zelda realized only one of them was still recording live. Hmm. The other two were showing fake images. Which recording is real and why? Do you remember what the room looked like when Detective Zelda was inspecting it? The clock certainly wasn't on this wall. It was on the opposite one. So the footage on the first monitor is fake. 
the footage on the second monitor isn't real also. If you look closer, you'll see a moth flying around the room, but it repeats the same movement over and over again. That's badly edited fake footage, so it makes the footage from the third monitor the real one. Oh, yes. Detective Zelda rewound the footage and found the moment when the Riddling Man had broken into the room. He was covering his face, so it was impossible to tell what he looked like. Still, Detective Zelda managed to notice something that could help her find the criminal. Can you tell what it is? If you look at the lower left corner, you'll see someone walk into the room and leave it quickly while the riddling man is stealing the crowns. Hmm. Could that mean that the riddling man has a partner? Hmm. To find that out, Detective Zelda questioned all the security guards who had been working the night shift. The first guard, George, said that he'd been keeping watch in front of the door. The only time he left his place was when he took a short bathroom break. The second guard, Joe, said he'd been standing in front of the door to the mayor's office all night, and the only person who took a break was George. Hmm. The third guard, Brian, said he'd been right there by the door as well. Hmm. Hmm. Detective Zelda knew only one of them was telling the truth, and the other two were lying. Who is the liar? Do you remember what the shoes of the man who entered the room looked like? White sneakers, and that's what Brian is wearing. So he's lying. And since Joe didn't mention that Brian had left his place, he's a liar too. Uh -huh. George is the only one who's telling the truth. Ciao. Brian and Joe immediately started begging Zelda. We can't end up in jail. We promised we didn't steal anything. You have to believe us, Detective Zelda asked. Then why did you lie? They said that they had heard some noise coming from the room while George was away. They decided that Brian would check the room and Joe would keep watch. When Brian saw someone in the room, he got scared and ran out of there. He told Joe that he would rather lose his job than have something bad happen to him. As for Joe, he lied because Brian was his best friend and he didn't want him to get fired. And since they never saw anyone enter or exit the room, they thought they were imagining things. After all, they were very tired. What do you think Zelda can do to check if the guards are telling the truth? She can check the surveillance footage of the street outside the building to confirm that nobody entered or left. When Zelda couldn't see anyone even walk across the street, she came to the conclusion that Brian and Joe were telling the truth. Yeah. The detective decided to check the secret room once again to figure out how the riddling man had gotten inside. Sometime later, she managed to spot another hidden door. Can you see it too? The bookcase is actually a door. Oh my god. She examined the door to figure out how to open it. She noticed three buttons, but only one could open the door. If Zelda pressed the wrong button, the door would get locked for good, and she would not be able to figure out where it led. Which button should she press? Take a look at the books next to the buttons. One of the titles is meaningless, while the others make sense. That must be an anagram, a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of another. When you rearrange the letters in the title, you'll get the second button. Mm. Detective Zelda pressed it, and the bookcase door opened. The woman saw a narrow hallway with stairs leading down. She took a step, and the door closed behind her back. She tried to force it open, but it wouldn't move. The only thing she could do was go down the stairs. She ended up in an underground pit. Inside, there was nothing but a shovel and a sign that showed her that she was around the pit. In the hole to the left, there were venomous snakes. The pit on the right was filled with poisonous gas. And on the ground right above her head, there was an angry dog with sharp teeth. What should she do? She
She should dig upwards. She needs to listen to the sounds the dog makes and wait for the animal to fall asleep. Then she should walk quietly past it. That must be how the riddling man entered and left the room. Detective Zelda didn't want to waste any more time, so she headed to Cafe West. A guy sitting at the table in the corner caught her eye. He looked suspicious. When Detective Zelda started walking towards him, he quickly wrote something on the newspaper he'd been reading. Then he ran away through the back door. Detective Zelda tried to catch him, but failed. She checked the paper and found another note. It said, You're not the mayor, but I'll give him one last chance. It looks like you work for him, so bring me $20 million in cash. We can meet at the building that has the most stories in two hours. What building does the riddling man mean? The library. Of course, Detective Zelda was not going to give him any money. She took an empty bag to trick him into believing she had the cash so that he wouldn't run away. She went to the library. When she entered, she saw the riddling man wearing the same sunglasses and coat. He was waiting for her in the riddle and puzzle books section. Then, suddenly, someone accidentally pushed the woman. She dropped her bag. It fell on the floor and opened. The riddling man saw it was empty and understood that this was just a plan to catch him. He ran away. But he dropped something while escaping. It was a library book, and there was a library card inside. It had three different addresses of three different people who had borrowed the book before. Zelda immediately realized which was the riddling man's address. How did she figure it out? Remember the note the riddling man wrote to her at the cafe? The first address is written by the same person. Detective Zelda had two police officers break into the riddling man's apartment. They found the crowns, but the criminal was gone. For some reason, Detective Zelda felt that she would see the riddling man again. It's vacation finally. You can buy a ticket to an unforgettable island full of entertainment. The helicopter takes you there. Unfortunately, you won't be able to relax much because you need to solve puzzles in addition to having fun. And at the end of the video, count how well you went through it. You're going to have fun all day. Challenging riddles require concentration and attention, but you want to solve them in a relaxed way this time. Enjoy! The first thing you do is go to a beach party. Sun, ocean, hot, white sand. You take a soda and go dancing. All of a sudden, the music stops. You ask the DJ what happened. Someone pulled the wire from the speakers, she says. You go behind the stage and see five cords. All of them have different colors. Two of them need to be inserted into the speakers. Which ones? Hurry up, save the party. Red and green. There are marks with corresponding colors in the left corner of each speaker. The party goes on. You're tired and hungry, so you go to a restaurant. There's a huge buffet with hot dishes. You take two sandwiches and sit down at the table. After a delicious meal, you decide to have some fresh fruit for dessert. You come up to the table with bananas, apples, pineapples, and kiwis. Some of these fruits are not fresh. Which of them, and why is that? All the fruit trays are almost empty, but there are a lot of kiwis left. People don't take them since they're not very fresh. After lunch, you go to the beach. The sand is so hot that you can fry eggs on it, so you put on your shoes. You see a group of people playing volleyball. You want to join them, get closer, but the game field is empty. Was it a mirage, or did the people leave the spot so quickly that you didn't notice? What do you think? It was a mirage, since there are no footprints in the sand. The sun is hot, and you decide to go into the jungle to hide in the shadows. You go out into a wide clearing and see several people sitting in the lotus position. It's a meditation session. People relax with their eyes closed and do not see that you've come. 
You carefully sit down next to them and realize that something is wrong with all these people. What is it exactly? They don't just sit, they're floating a couple inches off the ground. Who are they? You get scared and run away from this place. You run through the jungle and see three roads. One is littered with broken glass. There are plants with thorns on the second road, and you see hot coals on the third one. Which one will you choose? Actually, you can go everywhere. You put on your shoes on the beach, remember? In the very center of the island, you find a big old house. Its roof is destroyed and the windows are broken. But there's music coming from the building. You look inside and see a group of people in raincoats dancing to techno. You join the party and notice that each person has long fangs peeking out of their mouth. The dancers turn to you and look unfriendly. At first, you get scared. But then you realize these people are only pretending to be vampires. Fangs and cloaks are part of the masquerade. How do you know they're not vampires? The roof of the building is destroyed. The sunlight gets inside. The vampires should be afraid of it. You keep dancing, and at that moment, you get terrified. The dancers aren't vampires, but they're not humans either. Why do you think so? There's a mirror on the wall, and only you are reflected in it. You run out of the building and go through the jungle. White pigeons fly past you, and in the distance you can hear people's voices. You make your way through the bushes and find yourself at a wedding ceremony. People are sitting on the chairs. A bride, a groom, his friend, and two bridesmaids are standing in front. Everything seems fine, but then you realize that one of these people is an alien. Who? The bride. You can see that she has three hands. It doesn't scare you too much. After the ceremony, the party begins. You speak with the guests, take drinks and snacks. An old man gets on the stage to deliver a speech. He says that he has a gift to the newlyweds, an elixir that makes a person younger by five years and prolongs life. The same elixir is inside every drink, and everyone can drink it. All the guests rush to the table and grab glasses. Someone drinks two glasses at once. Someone five to six glasses in a row. Someone quickly drinks only one. And among all the people, there is an old lady. She slowly drinks her cocktail and becomes a little younger. Why did the elixir affect her, but not the other guests? The elixir was in ice cubes. The old lady drank for a long time, and the ice in the glass had time to melt. You leave the party and continue exploring the island. Ahead, you can see a tunnel with a warning sign. Beware the phantom inside. A guy and a girl come up with you. They offer to run through the tunnel to check if there are really ghosts there. So it won't be scary, you all run holding hands with each other. The girl is in the middle. It's cold and slippery inside the tunnel. You can't hear anything. You're approaching the exit and finally got out. It was a little scary, you say. It's good that I was in the middle, said the girl. Me too. I wasn't afraid, says the guy. At this point, you realize there was a phantom inside the tunnel. How did you figure that out? Three people ran through the tunnel and only one could be in the middle, the girl. Whose hand was the guy holding? You get scared and leave this place. Evening. You go back to the hotel and see that it's on fire. There's a fire on your floor. You run inside. Fire is everywhere. You have two valuable things that you want to take away. A small safe with documents and money and a laptop with your work. You need to choose one thing.
Take the computer. Most safes can withstand high temperatures, but a laptop is unlikely. You can find your safe after the fire. You've got a different room on the 10th floor. It's spacious with an ocean view. You're about to go to bed, but someone is knocking on the door. It's the administrator. She says there's a snake in your room, but you need to find it. Look around and find the reptile. Do you see those beaded curtains behind the second room? Among the beads, you can notice the outline of a snake. You release the snake into the jungle, return to your hotel, and notice footprints on the parquet floor. Oh. Someone was here and wanted to steal something. You call the administrator and tell her what happened. She has already found three suspects, and you need to guess which one of them broke into the room. There are two guys wearing shoes and a barefoot girl. Who will you choose? The girl couldn't leave these footprints. The guy who's standing next to her has soaking wet clothes on. His feet are also wet, but he has put on his sandals to hide them. The footprints in the room were wet. The second guy's clothes are dry. The girl's clothes are dry too, which means the guy wearing wet clothes got into your room. You can't fall asleep in the new room. It's already 3 a.m. and you decide to take a walk on the beach. Suddenly, you hear some noise. A beautiful girl is standing outside the window. She's smiling and looking at you. <laughs> at first, you smile back, but then you pick up your stuff and quickly run out of the room. You call the administrator and say that you won't stay in this hotel any longer. Why did you do that? Your room is on the 10th floor. The girl looked at you outside the window and you got scared. You can't sleep until morning and decide to leave this island. You sit on the sand and wait. A helicopter arrives and lowers a rope ladder. You're about to climb it, but at this moment, another helicopter arrives. It has the same rope ladder too. Now you need to choose the right helicopter. Take a closer look at the pilot of the first helicopter. It's an alien. You get into the second helicopter and fly away. The first one turned out to be a spaceship. Your vacation has come to an end, which means it's time to see what you've achieved. Zero to four points. Try to solve more logic puzzles and you'll be able to do better. Or maybe you just decided not to strain yourself too much and relax on this vacation. Five to eight points. Not bad. The party and the celebration atmosphere didn't dull your attentiveness and resourcefulness. But you can do better. 9 to 12 points. You were able to relax because you not only had fun, but also trained your brain. 13 to 15 points. You can quickly solve logic riddles and find a way out of any problematic situation. But don't forget to rest and relax your mind. So a restaurant owner called the police and said a customer had stolen a large sum of money. When the police arrived, the restaurant security guard already had three suspects. Thomas said, I was just walking along the street. I didn't even enter your restaurant. Dylan was angry. I've never been to this place before. I was sitting in my car when that guy ran up to me and started throwing accusations. John said, I did visit the restaurant yesterday, but I just came in to get a coffee and didn't stay longer than five minutes. After listening to the suspects, the police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Dylan. His car was parked in the place reserved for regular clients, but he claimed he'd never been to the restaurant before. Harrison was walking home when someone threw a bag over his head and knocked the guy out. When he came around, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door, and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will get locked forever. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. 
How did he figure it out? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. It was Sunday morning when a submarine captain found one of his sailors lying unconscious on his bunk. Someone had hit him on the head. It could only be another crew member. The captain had three suspects, Mateo, David, and Owen. He questioned them, and that's what they said. Mateo, I couldn't do it. I was checking the equipment in the machinery compartment. David, when it happened, I was washing dishes left after dinner. Owen, at that moment, I was busy posting a new video on TikTok. Who was lying? It was Owen. People can't use the internet for personal purposes on submarines. Leo studied art in college and rented an apartment together with his friend Andrew. Leo had bad eyesight and was wearing his glasses at all times. One day, Andrew didn't notice Leo's glasses and accidentally sat on them. They were beyond repair. Leo was so furious, he shouted at his friend and Andrew ran away. Leo called his girlfriend and asked her to give him a lift to the optician. He couldn't drive without his glasses. They were turning onto the main road when they spotted Andrew. He was lying in the bushes, unmoving. Leo immediately called the police and ambulance. Andrew was taken to a hospital, and a police officer started to question the witnesses. Leo told him, My girlfriend was behind the wheel when I spotted Andrew. We immediately stopped and called you. We didn't see anything suspicious. The police officer arrested Leo. Why? With such poor eyesight and without glasses, how could he notice Andrew lying in the bushes? Lily called the police. She found her neighbor, a famous artist, on the floor of his apartment. The unconscious man was quickly rushed to a hospital. The police had three suspects. Lily said, I live next door. I heard some shouting and loud bangs. I went to check on what was going on and found him on the floor. Zachary told the police the artist was his friend. We agreed to meet at the restaurant, and I came to give him a lift. And Cooper said, I ordered a painting from him, but when I came to pick it up, I saw the police. Who's guilty? It's Zachary. If they agreed to meet at the restaurant, why did he come to the artist's apartment? You wake up locked in a room with no windows and just one automatic door. Above the door, there's a large screen. Suddenly, it turns on. You hear a voice. It sounds muffled. Crack this riddle and you're free to go. If not, the room will be filled with toxic gas in five minutes. After that, you see the riddle. What could it mean? Hopefully, you'll realize in time that it means sitting on top of the world. Look at these mirrors and say which one is magical. It's the one the girl in the middle is holding. Apparently, it helped her get rid of her mole. A businessman's about to go through a security check at the airport when he realizes someone's taken his luggage. Airport security officers have three suspects. Anna says she doesn't need someone's old bag. She has her own, thank you very much. Mike answers he's a light traveler and doesn't have luggage. He keeps everything in his backpack. James says he's been in a car accident recently. His arm's broken, and he has a sprained ankle. He can hardly carry anything. In no time, the security officers arrest the thief. Can you figure out who it is? It's Anna. Nobody told her the bag was old. Several police officers are following a criminal. 
he hid in a random house. When the officers entered the building, they saw a costume party was going on, and the criminal pretended to be one of the guests. The police looked at the people and soon figured out who the criminal was. How did they understand it? It's the man in the black cape. Unlike other partygoers, he seemed to throw on everything he had at hand. Iron Man's helmet, Batman's cape, and Hulk's pants. Two young women disappeared one by one in a small town. The police found an envelope with a strange code in the first girl's apartment. In the second woman's house, they discovered another envelope, this time with a weird table. It was empty, but several squares were darker than the rest. The detective suspects the girl who will vanish next might be Madeline, Melanie, or Ariana. Can you figure out which one it'll be? After studying the coat and the table, the detective realized it would be Madeline. One day, before a popular blogger conference, the security of the building where it was going to take place got a strange message. One of the bloggers is going to be kidnapped tomorrow. It'll either be Monica or Leslie. It was too late to cancel the whole thing. That's why the security officers decided to keep a close eye on the girls. During the event, the girls weren't talking to anyone suspicious. Everything and everyone looked perfectly normal. But suddenly, it became clear who was plotting against one of the girls. Can you figure it out? It was Monica. Look at that rope in her bag. She was going to get rid of her competitor. Aaron was preparing for his test for ages. He was sure his answers were correct and he'd get an A. But several days later, the teacher told the guy he wanted to talk to him. It turned out Aaron had made a tiny mistake and the professor couldn't give him the highest mark. But, the teacher said, if you manage to solve one riddle, I'll give you an A. Aaron wanted to have a good mark. Of course, he agreed. That's what his teacher showed him. After thinking for several minutes, Aaron answered and it was correct. What did he say? In between jobs. Maria was walking home from work when she heard screaming. It was coming from the house she was passing by. The girl immediately ran in to help. She followed the voice and it brought her to the basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Suddenly, three portals opened in front of her, but only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant poisonous snakes. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock. It would crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, five hungry crocodiles were waiting for Maria. Luckily, the girl chose the safe portal and managed to escape. Which portal was it? She picked the second one. Maria threw her shoes inside, waited for the massive stone to drop, and then walked away. Two men were playing chess. They'd already played five games, and each man had won three of them. How is it possible? The men were playing with different opponents, not with each other. Sarah and Liam had a son named Oliver. On Saturday, the couple went out for dinner and left Oliver at home. When they returned, the boy was nowhere to be found. The anxious parents called the police. A detective arrived and questioned everyone in the house. The babysitter said she'd been packing Oliver's school bag for the next day. The maid said she'd spent the whole evening cleaning the kitchen. And the cook said he had been preparing food for the next day. He was listening to music and didn't hear anything. The police immediately knew who was lying. And what about you? It was the babysitter. 
children don't go to school on Sundays, so Oliver didn't need his school bag to be packed. Doris was having a beach vacation with her friend Teresa. One morning, the young women were sunbathing near the water. Teresa went to a cafe to get some lemonade while Doris went swimming. When Doris came back, she saw that her smartphone, which she had left on her beach towel, was gone. Have you seen my phone? She asked the man sunbathing nearby. Nah, I've been sleeping all this time. At this moment, Teresa came back with a lemonade. She looked around and immediately understood where Doris's phone was. Who took it? It was the man, all right. Before the incident, the spade was lying on his left. Now it's on the right. There's also a suspicious pile of sand near the spade now. The man must have hidden the phone in the sand, hoping to dig it out later. Terry invited his friend Alice, who was studying to become a police officer, to a party. It was organized by his friend Sean. Terry was worried there could be a thief at this party. Throughout the event, Alice was watching the guests attentively. At the end of the party, she told Terry who the thief was. Have you figured it out? It's the host, Sean. At the beginning of the party, one of the guests had a watch on his wrist, and this woman had a beautiful necklace. But at the end of the party, the watch is already on Sean's wrist, and the necklace is in the flower pot. Detective Carlson was walking along the street when he heard the sound of glass shattering. He looked around and saw a large crowd gathering near the broken window of a jewelry store. The shocked owner was inside. The detective ran up to him. Has anything been stolen? The man said he hadn't understood yet. But then Carlson exclaimed, Sorry, I've got a thief to catch, and rushed away. What did he see? The store window was broken to distract everyone. People were looking away and didn't see this guy stealing a wallet from the man in a suit. At first, the wallet was in the man's pocket. Now the thief is rushing away, the wallet in his hand. The police had long suspected that Mr. Hall was a smuggler, transporting forbidden things on his yacht. That day, they knew for sure the cargo they were looking for was on his vessel. Several police officers came with a search warrant to the marina where Mr. Hall's yacht was parked. They examined every nook and cranny of the yacht, but didn't find what they were looking for. Mr. Hall was sneering while seeing them off. Suddenly, the youngest police officer exclaimed, I know where the cargo is! What did he understand? The cargo could only be underwater. Wrapped in a protective cover, it was tied to the anchor. Look at these guys carefully. One of them is not living alone. Who is it? It's the man on the right. He's got two toothbrushes. Austin, a rich businessman, brought very important documents to his office. But he had a meeting and needed to leave for several hours. Austin asked his secretary to be on the lookout for anything suspicious. His competitors could try to break into his office to look at the documents. When he came back, his secretary told Austin everything had been quiet. But when the man looked around, he realized someone had been inside his office. The secretary eventually admitted having fallen asleep while Austin was away. How did the businessman understand someone had visited his office? The globe on his desk is now turned in the opposite direction. William, a successful businessman, was having dinner at an expensive restaurant. At one point, he went outside to make an important call. When he returned, his case with money and documents was gone. The thief could only be another customer. When the police arrived, they questioned everyone who was in the restaurant. Karen said she had been writing a new chapter of her book. Paul said he had been waiting in a line to get to the bathroom. Donna had already paid for her coffee and was putting on her coat. And Robert was having a video call with his girlfriend. It didn't take detectives long to figure out who the thief was. Do you know it?
The criminal is Paul. Besides him, there were only four other visitors at the restaurant, and they were all busy. How could there be any line for the bathroom? The police got informed that one of the most wanted criminals, Carl Walker, was going to arrive in the country. According to this information, the man was going to come by plane. Unfortunately, the police knew very little about him. He was short, wearing glasses, and traveling under a false name. Detective Adams went to the airport. He detained four people who fit the description. They were Mr. Lewis, Mr. Relkaw, Mr. Taylor, and Mr. Wilson. Look at these men carefully and try to figure out who the criminal is. It's Mr. Rell Call. His last name is actually the criminal's last name, Walker, but with its letters reversed. A detective is looking for an important witness. Without them, she won't be able to solve a complicated case. The only thing she knows is that the witness is left-handed. Look at these people and help the detective choose the person she needs. It's the waitress. She's holding the tray with her right hand and serving people with her left dominant hand. Look at these princesses and try to figure out which of them is the fake one. It's the princess on the right. The tiaras of the princess on the left and the one in the middle have a reflective shine to them. You can see they are made of precious metals. But the Ice Princess's tiara doesn't shine. It's made of plastic. A businessman arrived at his office after a long trip. He discovered that some important documents had disappeared from his desk. He immediately called the police and a detective arrived shortly after. After interviewing all the workers, he had a list with three suspects on it. They were Emma, the accountant, Sophia, the receptionist, and James, the sales manager. But all of these people claimed they hadn't been inside the businessman's office. It didn't take the detective long to figure out who was lying. Do you have any ideas? The thief is James. Both women wear high heels in the office, but the footprints on the floor are obviously left by a pair of sneakers. An elderly lady called the police. She told them someone had sneaked into her house while she had been asleep. The intruder took away the money she kept hidden in her kitchen cupboard. The woman was sure it was one of her neighbors. The police visited all the neighbors, but each of them claimed they had spent the entire day at home. Look at their houses and try to figure out who the thief is. Rick is lying. He wasn't at home. His car was parked near the house already after the snow had built up on the driveway. Look at these people carefully. Who does this dog belong to? The dog's owner is the guy in the middle. He's the only one who isn't trying to pet the animal. Can you figure out how many watermelons there are in this picture? Gloria failed her math test. Luckily, her professor was an understanding woman. She offered a deal. If the girl cracked three riddles, she'd get a good mark. Of course, Gloria agreed. The first task was to figure out the answer to the equation. Can you do the same? The answer is 232. Gloria didn't need much time to solve it and got the next puzzle. The student saw several numbers made up of matches. What should be the last number? The last number should be 1. After every step, the number of joints goes down by 1. And finally, the teacher gave Gloria several pool balls. Use only 3 of them to make this equation true. After a couple of minutes, Gloria figured out the way to do it. Do you know what she did?
The girl rotated 9 and got 6. After that, she took the balls with numbers 13, 11, and 6 and got 30. Gloria's quick wit helped her, and she passed the test. You're trapped in a room with no doors or windows. All of a sudden, the room starts filling with water. You check everywhere, but can't find any way to turn it off. You know that help is on the way, but it's still at least 5 minutes until their arrival. You only have 2 minutes. After that, the entire room will be flooded. Obviously, you can't hold your breath for 3 minutes. You've got 3 objects, but only one of them can save your life. What should you choose? A straw, a rope, or an empty bucket? You should opt for the bucket. Put it on your head. This will create an air pocket, and you'll be able to breathe for a couple of minutes until help arrives. You've got lost in a desert. It's already dark, but bright moonlight illuminates the surroundings. At one point, you see a tower. But an evil wizard is looking out of the window. He tells you, If you want to save your life, solve my riddle. You need to figure out the height of this tower. You look around and see nothing but several fallen tree branches. There's also a watch on your wrist and your own shadow. What can you use to figure out how high the tower is? Your shadow will help you. You can compare its length with the length of the shadow cast by the tower. Then, since you know your height, you can calculate the height of the tower.